In the comments of one of my other videos, I got a message from Crystal. Crystal wrote, Hi Paul, thank you for your tutorials. For my current project, I have darker text that is dragged and dropped into darker images. I was wondering if there was a way uh, that you could change the state of the text after it's been dropped into an object. Meaning, can I start out with a darker text and then once it's dropped into the image, can the text then be changed to a lighter text so it's more visible? Well, good news, Crystal. This is totally something you can do in Adobe Captivate 9. In fact, this combines two of my favorite features in Captivate presently, and that's the drag and drop capability, but also multi-state objects. So to show you what Crystal is facing as far as the challenge is concerned, I've set up this drag and drop to sort of show a before and after. Let's show the before. I'll just do a preview HTML5 in browser, and we'll show you the drag object one, along with its counterpart drop target one here. So here's the problem that Crystal is facing. If I select the drag object one, and I drag it over to drop target one, I, it gets lost in that field of black. So it's very difficult to determine whether uh, that object is still there. I could have, you know, in a more complex drag and drop, maybe I've forgotten about that item and I'm not sure if something's been placed there. Let me hit reset. A reset button's really useful in this particular case. So let's take a look at what the solution is. So in this case, I've gone ahead and set up my drag object number two to already contain multi-state multi objects or, or multiple states, if you will. Let's click the State View button so we can see those. And I'll just slide this over to the left a bit so we can see what's happening here. So the default or the normal state is just what you see here. It's a black text with a completely transparent background for that smart shape. Uh, the additional inbuilt drag and drop multi-states that are available, of course, are the uh, drag over state. And what I've done here is I've made the background a little less transparent, 50% uh, less transparent, uh, incidentally. So that will give it uh, a little bit of an outline, a visual cue for the user to know that they've selected and started to drag that object. Now for the drop accept, in other words, when you've successfully dropped that drag object to your drop target, what I've done is I've switched it back to a completely transparent background, but I've made the text white. It doesn't look good here because we're on that, that lighter shade background, but once you drop this on the black drop target, it'll look fine, of course. In addition, I've also added a uh, drop reject state. Now this is applicable if the drag object is going to be rejected and sent back to its original location. So I thought making it red, sort of like, you know, incorrect uh, would be appropriate. And we'll see this in action because I've actually set up the drop targets to reject anything other than the correct answers. And the final thing is the drop start. So when you start dragging an object over, but before you've reached a drop target, I'm going to have it go to 100% opacity or not transparent at all. Again, the same white background with the dark text. So let's exit this state and let's take a look at what this looks like. Hopefully this solves Crystal's problem and uh, gives you guys some ideas of how you can make your drag and drops a little bit more interesting looking. So again, remember our original drag object again gets lost in that field of black. That's not very good at all. Let's try our drag object number two. So if I select it, it turns white and I've got that background. And as I roll over one of the drop targets, it becomes semi-transparent, 50% transparent. And I'm gonna let it go here, but this isn't the right place for it. So the drag and drop interaction is gonna reject this drag object and send it back to its original spot. Remember, I set this up to turn red momentarily. And that's exactly what happens. So now when I drag it over to the correct location, again, it starts off white, then goes to that semi-transparent look. Now if I release it here, this is the correct place for it to go. 
it's going to convert to what Crystal's looking for, the white text with, again, that transparent background. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help building your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com. Follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.